Okay, you interrupted my jam there at the demo loop. Ooh! This game might need a healthy dose of V-Sync, I think. Alright, well... Get, don't pay attention to that. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, the fuck is this game? <laughs> a fair question. Um, would it help you if I said you'll find out? Why is it so fast? Uh, because the game is not limiting its own frame rate. Uh, and hopefully I can fix that. Is that meant to be that fast? No, it's absolutely not. Uh, but, 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 but there's a little... You know, us, us professional streamers, we know the tricks. Uh, let's, I really hope to God that this works. I did not see a native VSync setting, um, but this worked for Shadows of the Empire. And MDK2 is from that roughly from the same era of PC. So it stands to reason that maybe it'll work the same. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You played this forever ago? Yeah, this was, uh, this was Bioware's second game as Bioware. I could be wrong about that. Their first one was like, oh shit. I can't remember, but it was like a mech combat game. And then they made this. And then they, no, they made Baldur's Gate before this. Now I'm trying to remember. Oh, that's right. It's a launcher. So, you have full screen or routine. I mean, putting it not full screen will probably work as well. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any uh, natural V-Sync, but we'll see. Shattered Steel. Yes, that was their first published game. I never played that one. Right when the music hits. Well, this will be a good test. Shit. All right. Maybe, maybe the game itself doesn't run like that. <sighs> Jinkies! Here, I'm gonna look up. Because now I'm, now I'm curious. Okay, at least this is seems to be running normally. Kurt Hectic never wanted to be a hero. He was content with his life and wanted to live out his years in quiet, dignified anonymity. Kurt Hectic. Sadly, it was not to be. Kurt was employed as a janitor for Dr. Fluke Hawkins, eccentric man of science. The messes were large, but the pay was good. So when Hawkins left, Kurt followed. Little did he know what was to come. The doctor had wished for a place away from his detractors, away from those that thought him mad. With janitor in tow, he left the earth vowing to return only when his genius was proven. The greatest of the doctor's inventions in exile was the six-legged canine, Max. Max was the perfect assistant, and his appreciation of firepower made him a fine watchdog as well. Yeah, I forgot about the comic panels. Until the invasion, aliens from a strange dimension attacked the Earth. It's fun! Like, the, the directing of this cutscene is really fun. Mind crawlers the, like, punching around at the cameras, the zooming, and a lot of character to it. Earth were helpless before the onslaught. Dr. Hawkins had to They're getting a lot of mileage out of not a lot of assets. An and I know this because I did this a lot in Funhouse edits. Try and disable the machines. He was reluctant. It's like had no choice. getting all the meat off the bone, you know? Was the Earth's last hope. Kurt fought valiantly, driving to the very heart of the invasion. There he challenged the alien leader, a grotesque creature named Gunter Glut. And with Max's aid, Kurt was victorious. As their leader fell, the invasion crumbled and the aliens retreated, their tails between Oh yeah, legs. it's gonna frame tear as well. They left the Earth because it's full screen. Spoiled, even ruined, um, but not beaten. If it's if it gets really bad, uh, beaten. I think there's something now, I can do. The aliens routed and order restored, our heroes can return to their normal everyday lives. Or can they? <laughs> or can they? <laughs> time will tell. <laughs> really good VO. Come toast, Kurt. You've done well. Everything's Jake for sure. Uh, yeah. Well, whatever. Don't sell yourself short. Those aliens never knew what hit them. A major setback for them, I'm certain. Yeah, I'm glad it's over. Yes, it's all over. <sighs> I just knew it. Minecrawler in sector 867. This part's not running too fast, but it makes sense that a cutscene would have a locked frame rate. Good gravy! 
That's Edmonton! Maybe just the demo runs unconstrained. I hope you're up to saving the world one more time, Ed. Yes? You sure are quick to send me down. You're the man for the job. Max and I will help if we can, but for now it's up to you. Kinkies, I'm so, so yeah, proud. Kurt's like a depressed janitor that accidentally put on a super suit. I think, uh, from what I recall... The Jim Dandy. Hedgehog, thank you for this. Thank you for the sub. This is when games were art. This wasn't meant to be widescreen. Hell yeah. This is so fucking sick. Like, the, the scope of this being a playable intro in, like, what? I think this was 2000? Uh... Also, I finally looked it up. This was Bioware's third game. They did Shattered Seal, then Baldur's Gate, and then this. Just, like, three massively different games! And all very, very good! I don't know about Shattered Seal, but... I just remember, uh, I remember replaying that intro like four times and like, that is sick! Like that, that cool like drum kick. Uh, the intro kind of, uh, they made MDK first? No, they didn't. That was, uh, that was shiny. Oh man, it's arrow keys by default. Before you begin your assault, Kurt, I've got to refresh your memory on how to use the coil suit. Use right. your directional keys to move around. <sighs> Try pressing two buttons at the same time for diagonal movement. There were the so many games that I bound right click to jump. And it's because of games like this. If you're comfortable moving about, stand by the arrow in the center of the room and face the exit. Also, yeah, just like, this game borrows a lot of the original style. It's a really weird mishmash now that I think about it. Because, uh, yeah, I, I didn't mean to be so curt, ha, huh, pun intended, about it. But, yeah, I only know that they didn't make one because I, I was just looking it up. So, uh... Uh, but yeah, Shiny made one, yeah. I mean, it's Shiny is an amazing dev, too. And this is just, like, all of the batshit weirdness and kind of, like, 90s cool dude edginess that MDK was from Shiny has now been put through an interesting filter at Bioware, resulting in a really weird game that's, like, got... It's got some edge, but it's got some camp. It's a little try-hard, but in a fun way. Like, it... it to me, it's, like... <laughs> see, see, like, a game like Messiah is so try-hard that it's funny. But this game kind of understands what it is, you know? It's like, what if somebody made Messiah, but they knew what Messiah was? <clears throat> oh, see? Oh, it's early in the morning? Oh, see you, Novarg. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, but I remember this, this, the intersection of those sensibilities made MDK2 a pretty special game. Um, also, God, what a... I tend to think of, like, 98 to 02 to be, like, this renaissance of PC and, to some degree, the swan song of the PC. Because consoles were just the thing from then on until like basically now which is cool but um <clears throat> there were some crazy experimental games um made in that space by those devs before like things just got really safe after that for a long time this is where we begin with the shooting use the fire button to fire your chain gun and aim with the mouse destroy those cards in front of the agent. Look at all those bullet casings. Placed a grenade somewhere close by. Walk over to it and add it to your inventory. The ads for the first MDK looked real serious and grim when I was a kid. The first I never I played the first MDK a little bit. Hit the use item button. I liked MDK two so much that I went back and wanted to play MDK one, but I just couldn't like. I think when I played it on PC at the time. You could only move with the mouse, like there was, for some reason. It was one of those weird things. You know, like, have you ever tried to play Doom with just a mouse? Um, so there was something up with it. Something something was up with it, and I was like, I can't, I don't want to do this. None of this. Also, I don't know what the use item key is. God, why is it? Hold on a second. Hmm. Why did they have the turns on W and... T weird. All right, well... 
It should give me the chance to do it. I don't think I ever need to turn because that's on mouse. I'll just do that. Shoot, combine, quick save. Sniper mode. Do that and then... Shit, how do you... How do you unbind? Because now it's two things bound to one key. May I do it again? No. Okay, you have to scroll it off. Great. Okay, so B is now my the button that I use to get rid of uh, to get rid of things. Okay. Zoom, zoom out. Up, down. There's no way it's gonna. Oh, it recognizes mouse wheel. Hold on. I need two. I need two nothing buttons. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. <sighs> Christ. Okay, whatever. I think that's fine. I don't need to turn. I think it's fine. Yeah. I need something different. Shit. Uh, one second. That's not gonna work. Let's try that. Okay. Now, let's learn to jump and use your parachute. Look for the lowest floating platform in this room. Run toward it and jump on it by pressing. There's something janky with the movement and aiming. That's why I didn't play much. Jump to the, the first one was crazy janky. The second one's a little less janky. Jump to the next platform. But um, yeah, the first one, I just, something about it, I was just like, nah. <laughs> something about the controls and, yeah, the aiming and stuff. The FPSV is 90s as fuck. Yeah, that UI, that frame. It's just like cool and alien and there's shapes and, I mean, at least they got the color grading, right? It's like blue and yellow. It's things being shiny. Shiny and round. Like, everybody suddenly got the ability to do, like, 3D graphics that were shiny and round. Provided they were pre-rendered. Can't do that shit in real time yet. So it's like all the 2D graphics of a game were shiny and glossy and round. Uh, because it was like, oh, sick! They Finally we can do round stuff! It's a cool little item indicator. Now let's teach you how to use your sniper scope. Get the sniper grenade by bumping into it. Stand by the net with the edge facing the exit. Press the sniper mode button to enter sniper mode. The zoom looks like everything in Farscape? Yeah. Alright, well, whatever. The game started now, so... No more tutorials. Well, until I play another character. Oh, there's also the camera. Like, the, the camera follows the bullet in the upper right in sniper mode. It's like a little... Like a little technical flex. I think that was the big deal about MDK1 as well. Is a Metroid clone? No. No, it is not. It is a big, dumb, goofy action game. Puzzle game. It's both. If I get that far, it'll make sense. Like Donnie Decoy. Look at that stupid little item <laughs> graphic. <laughs> Oh yeah, those things drop items, I think? Oh, those- oh, those are enemy spawners, alright. Alrighty. But like, that's some pretty classic video game shit, right? There's a level, it's like almost gauntlet style. There's little nodes that spawn enemies, and your job is to shoot the enemies, because they're aliens and bad. Bad aliens out there, you there with gun, go! What are you waiting for? Let's see here. I think that's like a switch. You have to not aim. Not really. When you're not scoped, uh, like a big ham shank is, is life. <laughs> That's a chomp sound. Um, now when you're just shooting like this, you basically hit in front of you, and then the life bars go down. Um, oh, here we go. Now it's, it's the millennium. Oh man, this music. Oh, baby! This is so dark, is <laughs> Oh! 
threw out my little... This is my dummy. Oh, there's like a little scribbly version of me on it. Coming to the realization that half of my chat is people born before 85. There may be some oldies in here. Hey man, I'm, I'm getting up there. Here's the fun thing though. If stuff is old enough, it becomes quaint. And then young'uns can find it and be like, what the hell is this? <coughs> oh, I think you have to snipe those. All right. Time for party rocking is over. Shit. I'm laughing at my ass. Oh, that. Okay, hold on. It's it's coming back to me a little bit. I actually think, I think what I did is no. Wait, nope, wrong. Fuck. Okay. Okay. There we go. Can you, not, you can throw a grenade while you're jumping. Maybe it's a mouse we maybe that's a mouse button problem. Maybe you can't. I thought you could. Alright. Oi. It's 21. Considered young? I don't know. I mean I'm not putting labels on things. I just don't think you have to when it comes to things like this, and maybe you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you have to be around for when it came out for it to still be interesting. Video games are timeless is what I'm saying. Got him. Okay, yeah, no mouse wheel works in the air. I guess you just, you can't throw grenades while you're jumping. Why you could. Rainworm, thank you for the prime. I don't care about it unless it came up before Tetris. Hmm, it's an interesting cutoff. Oh, there was a ramp on the other side, wasn't there? This is a time capsule for anyone? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that's a fair way to put it. Again, this is a Bioware game. Amazing you can still play this? Well, you should thank the good old game store. Who I am the... Bleh, who this channel is officially affiliated with and gave me this game for free. So, <laughs> but yeah. Good old games uh, makes it so that all their games are click to play. It usually comes prefabbed with like DOSBox. Uh, this game, I think, if I'm gonna guess, it comes with like an OpenGL wrapper just to make it 100% compatible. They, they, uh. Sorry. <clears throat> Here's a fun thing, too. Um. Oh, Overhaul and Bioware made this? I don't know about... I didn't know about Overhaul. Who's Overhaul? Overhaul pill me. <clears throat> um, another benefit of the good old game store, which gave me this game for free, uh, is that uh, they do a lot of the, like, community source work for you, too. So... <clears throat> sorry. Oh, something got lodged. That was weird. Um, so often with these games, there's, like, there's making it work, and then there's making it run modern so like this game supports widescreen that's not something the game does or was supposed to do clearly it was never officially patched into the game um but the good old games launcher has widescreen stuff already unlocked and already working um so there i what i've had what i found before is like you can buy a version of a game on steam and it is like the old version like it'll run but it like it's not gonna have widescreen it's not gonna support all that stuff and you gotta you gotta go to google.com and, you know, put in your 15 to 30 minutes of dropping files around here and running auto configs and things like that. Uh, but every version of every game I've gotten off of good old games has everything done already. All of that stuff. <clears throat> I remember I, um, I got Silent Hill 4 and uh, I was like, ah, I remember the PC port with this. It was rough. So I was already like, before I even downloaded it, I was already down, or I was already looking at like widescreen fixes and all this stuff. And, uh, and like, DLLs you have to drop in the folder to get it to, to unlock things. And then, like, I downloaded the game from Good Old Games, went to the game folder, went to copy in some stuff, and it was already there. I was like, huh? And then I started clicking around. I was like, oh, they they did it already. It's all just packed in there. So, 
Uh, my, my gastrointestinal distress aside. Just want to shout out. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> I want to see a picture of a tiny lizard. I do. Got a release on WiiWare? Wait, what? Oh, Overhaul did the Wii port. Oh, okay. MDK2, oh yeah, that's right. There was like an MDK2 HD. <clears throat> yeah, I, I... I, uh... I was about to say, this This is a game from before the era of developers working together, kinda. Oh wait, that's how I got in here. I don't recall, like, developer collaborations really being a thing yet. Games weren't didn't have, like, that level of complexity. I guess there were still middleware tools and stuff like that, but... Alright, wait a second. There's a tiny lizard. Ooh! He's a tiny guy! Ooh, he's so small! He still seems wise, though. Small bit wise. A lot of wisdom in there. <clears throat> yeah, how did they find it? Yeah, it's done with your shit? Yeah. Well, that's what makes him wise. Oh, yeah, I remember this part's pretty cool. You go up a tube, it's like a space elevator. I remember there being a section where you could, like, look out over p the planet Earth. Maybe that's coming up. They gotta load it in. Nope, never mind. Maybe it's another tube. Oh, that's so cool! God, sorry. Give me a second. Ah, something's something's weird. <sighs> okay, I'm back. Sorry about the uh, the dramatic exit there. I don't know what was going on. I what I've learned is, while Huel is a wonderful product, it is the ter most terrible thing to drink in the middle of a stream, because not only does it just make my my face really phlegmy, but it's also just like gritty, and sometimes it feels like that can like catch in my throat. And then if I talk a lot, it's almost just like sand is just jumbling around and and it's like I'll just feel these like weird itchy sensations. Like stuff is uh, jammed in the wrong place. Yeah, Cyberbub to, to I guess to expound. Huel is like a meal replacement powder. Um, it's like kind of like Soylent, except it's powder. You just mix it with water and then it's nutrition goo. Uh, but it, it goes down fine. It's just kind of gritty. And, uh, it gets pretty, it gets pretty intense if it, if it sticks in your throat and then you talk. Alright. Remember the buttons? I think you had to, oh, that's right, you have to, like, shoot a mortar in there. Oh, you do MRE stuff and it's the same? Mm. That's what the the, the camera actually means something pretty quickly. It's kind of neat. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's cool. That's a fun little little mechanic. Oop. Oh fuck. I don't know what that means. Help. What type of game is this? Is it straight shooter action? Um, no, it is also a puzzle game. Are you serious? Come. Wow. Shit. I have to do the tutorial again? Whoa. Okay. We are classic gaming now. Mmm. Better not fall ever. Shit, man. It's almost three games. It is, yeah. It is, uh, it is three games. There are three characters you play as, and each one has a specific and unique mechanic. Oh, serious question, sorry. Actually, it wasn't a question. <laughs> I used Huel for an entire month, replaced two meals a day. I felt great and helped me cut back on the calories, but Christ, my bowel movements were erratic as fuck. Uh, yeah, Huel has a lot of fiber. Um... 
probably more fiber than you're used to getting. But yeah, I could see why. Like, sometimes it's just on you. It's just... It's just now. Is Crimson Chin here the best character? He's he's charming. I think, yeah, if you just shoot this, you get to go. That's right. Okay. Oh, yeah. It doesn't seem like the visual tearing is that bad, but if it gets if it gets rough, just let me know. I think there's something I can do about it. One of the characters is a dog, so that one's the best. Yeah, the six six armed ro robot dog that can equip six guns. This isn't the. Flippin'? <laughs> He's doing cartwheels. Enemy's trying to style on me. Trying to embarrass me. It's a janitor and they're out here making fun of my ass. It's like shitty high school kids. Trying to get this a demo of this game to work for like a week straight, never did. Oof. Just gonna have to jump on these. Why do I not remember doing that the first time? Oh, because I didn't. Excuse me, Unreal One vibes. It's 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 from that school of aesthetic, I think. There really is something about like 90s era PC pipe hallways. This one at least has a color accent, but yeah. Nothing but sewers and pipes and tubes. Green and brown. Look at all this particle effects, baby! This is, this is real gaming. No one has gamed until now. Sample. It just needs the whoop and the yeah from It Takes Two you now. Ask me that? Actually, I guess that's a bit dated. Sneak attack. Got him. Uh, Melina, thank you for the cheer. Ooh. Oh, they got me. Ooh. Fuck. Maximus Unreal Tournament 2004. I really tried to get into Unreal Tournament 3. Uh, I played a fair amount of 2004. Man, 3 had probably just such an incredible soundtrack. I still listen to it sometimes. Can you save manually? Yes, you can. All right. I think there's even a quick save button that I didn't ever hit. Yep, F6. All right. Yep, there it was. That's all right. Yeah, UT3 was brutal. I'm, gl I'm glad I'm not the only one that thought so. I tried to pick up that game up and I just got... Man, that game chewed me up every time I played it. Skill-based matchmaking is, uh, has changed everything. <laughs> I had a land party with some old coworkers for UT 2004 in like 2015. That was awesome. Oh man, that's a that's a real time bubble right there. I still like land parties. I've tried to convince friends to do it, and they're like, "Well, I'll come, but I'm not bringing my computer." And I'm like, "What? What are you? Why are we even doing it then?" 
I'm like, I'll bring a laptop. I'm like, come on. What's the point? I'll protect you. Ace, thank you for the cheer. The stream's coming after a real garbage week has really helped. Glad to have you all when things get rough. Yeah, man, I'm sorry to hear you've had a rough time, but... Let it out, man. Gotta ex accept it. That's... That's what I've been, uh... That's what I've been learning. Is to, uh... I don't know, I used to, like, get to that state where I was, like, burned down and, and ragged and stuff like that. And I would always think, like, well... I have to get rid of this, right? Like, it's my job now to just get back to a functional working state. But, uh, I think what I should have instead been doing is actually listening to what... Uh... What my heart and my my body or whatever were trying to tell me. I'm like, no, it's okay. Except being being ground down. And be like, ugh. Maybe that makes it pass faster. And a 50 foot Ethernet cables? Yeah. Power strips on power strips. Daisy chained. Folding chairs and card tables and coffee tables being used. Got left unread with this girl from my class that I thought was cool, so that's fun. Mm hmm. Well. Try not to read too much into it if that's possible. Who knows? There's all there's all kinds of reasons. Somebody might not respond right away. God knows God knows I've done that. God, who knows how many times? It's a habit I'm trying to get out of, but I just the way that my brain organizes tasks is not very conducive to like responding to somebody as soon as they write me. You know, it's like I, I insert it in the stack somewhere. Um because it, like if I respond right then it's interrupting whatever I was already doing. Even if what I was already doing is sort of thinking about something else. Uh, even then, I do kind of like to, like, sort of conclude my thoughts, I guess? Um, and then I can just forget. I've done that. About, about important shit, too. It's not like, oh, if it's important, you'd remember. No. It just falls off. Falls out of my brain. Like a, like a piece of paper bouncing off a trash can. I've tried various ways to prevent that from happening, and... May just be how I am. Hey, Spectum. How you doing? So, uh, long story short. Don't interpret somebody leaving you unread as that they don't care. Uh, you know, they may have... Th that text may have popped up just as somebody else was saying, Hey, your mom's out of the hospital or something. <laughs> you never know. People got, people got crazy complicated lives. Too late. <laughs> well, it is what it is. Whoop. Ooh. Huh. A little closer. Yeah. There we go. Maybe you need to work out your brain muscles. I don't know about that. I think if anything is the problem, I've been overworking the brain muscles. You have to have a high, a very high IQ to be me. <laughs> Has anyone said that yet? <laughs> That's my favorite. Uh, let's quickly become my favorite high IQ. Save? Ah, I'm playing dangerous. Alright, now I'll save. Probably? Yeah, you're right. You're right, Mazel. God. I would it be just an arrogant shithead know-it-all again? I know everything in the universe. I am so smart. Played so much MDK back in the day. Schmoopsie, I didn't play uh, MDK1 very much. I don't know why, just something about it. Because MDK1 you only played as Kurt, right? Totally understand if people don't respond or they respond whenever they do. People have their own lives and are busy. I try not to take it personally and worry about it. That's the best goal, but you know, hey, if you're anxious, that's fine too. To some degree, like the anxiety, the anticipation, that's part of it. That's what is fun. I do like that the music cut out here and it's just like wind. I'm a big fan of video game sequences that only have environmental audio. There's been a lot more of that uh, lately, actually. There's, when I think about like Half-Life, 
was kind of the first game that didn't have a rolling soundtrack that I can think of. You missed 14? No, you didn't. It's uh, it's in like one hour. It didn't happen already, did it? I'm gonna be very upset if uh, if I missed it. Also, I have their stream on notifications on, so they haven't gone live yet. Yeah, not yet. No, no, we're not playing 14. They're doing a, uh, they're announcing the next uh, expansion today. So I'm gonna watch the uh, the event for that. And I hope that they cover everything in about an hour, because that's about the time that I allotted before we start doing the George Romero script, so. Save, no. What's happening in 14? New expansion. Yes. God bless that Yoshi P work ethic. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, that's so cool. It's like a Halo style, or it's like it's like a Halo kind of kind of shot. Something to show like big scale. Yeah. Okay, Una, you've seen these before. I was hope. Well, I I know they're long, but are, did they get through like all the high points in like the uh, the first hour? I wanted to stream the whole thing, but that's also the night that everybody wanted to do the the script read. Uh, really? Oh man. So it's gonna be like an hour of like reading poetry. And then they're going to have like an interpretive dance. And then Yoshi P is going to give like a 20 minute keynote. And then, damn it. Ugh, they hit the good shit at the end of like two or more hours. Are you for, are you for real? Oh, damn. Well, I guess I'm going to miss it then. I've never seen one of these before. So I guess I'll watch the first hour. Shit. Well, I'll catch up on it after we're done reading, I guess. It'll be fun to, uh, it'll be fun to watch the trailer and stuff. <laughs> I'm pretty blitzed, I guess. <sighs> oh, well, you know what? That's fine. It's it's a bummer, too, because I was like... <sighs> what is it about absolutely everything that I try to schedule always overlapping? I don't actually schedule that much, but for some reason, it's always at exactly the same time as something else. And that happens all the time, and it makes me go insane. I, like, how often do they announce Final Fantasy XIV expansions? It happens pretty rarely, right? Just so happens it's the exact time that, like, other people want to do a script reading. I'm not complaining. Just like, what's going on there? And it's not like there's other events that I give a crap about in the last, like, few months. Just like, how does it, how did those two darts land at the same spot over and over and over again? Oh, they said something big is happening at the start? Okay, well, like, I'm not getting too worked up. It's more just like I'm bewildered at how often that occurs. I have so little going on, and yet somehow... <laughs> It hits scheduling conflicts all the time. Uh, they bugged your house. They must. That fucking sucks. You okay, Steph? Oh. Uh, it's just, it's really annoying that, like, the way that some of these things are apparently built. Ugh. Hmm. Steph's working. Uh, well, okay, maybe maybe they'll, they'll give us a splash right off the top. Um. And if, you know, seriously, like, no no hard feelings at all. I'm just, again, more bewildered at the the absurdity of it. Um, sorry, Malcolm, you were asking who else is joining. So, uh, Diction was the one who put it all together. And I'm very grateful to, that he asked me to join. But So, it's going to be Diction and then me and Bruce and Sark and APL Fisher. Open fire. So, kind of old Machinima crew coming back, which is really, really neat. Uh, Chaz, uh, thank you very much for the cheer. Been a long time inside gaming and Funhouse fan. I haven't seen you much since you left Funhouse. Excited to see you on with APL and you boys later. Should be fun. Yeah, it should be. It should be. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. And I like, I love doing stuff like this. Uh, at least I think I will. I guess I haven't done many table reads, but what character are you going to read? I don't know. Uh, Addiction didn't send the script on purpose. So it's going to be a, a first time reading. Uh, uh, so I imagine, I imagine Diction has casting in mind. So he's gonna basically give us our parts, and then we go. Uh, so I don't, I like, I don't even know what parts there are. What are we reading? It is George A. Romero's Resident Evil script. Uh, apparently, Romero wrote a treatment of Resident Hi. Evil, what and I guess it never went to production. And it's on the internet or something. Core, thank you very much for the cheer. Diction has alluded to a couple things in it, but largely, largely trying to keep it, keep it mum. Oh, 
like the first boss is this giant Star Fox looking thing. This game does like playing with scale. I remember when like this was a big thing on PC, I feel like. Since you were close to your monitor, uh, and you could see like smaller characters. And since like math and making a thing big on in a in a video game is easy, you just make the numbers bigger. So there were a lot of games in this era that played with scale a lot, made you seem made you feel really small or make you feel like you were in really big spaces. Um, I think I'm supposed to be doing something. Uh... Oh. Oh boy. Another one? Oh! Jesus Christ, that screen shake. I mean, I, I get it. It's like it's a mechanic. They don't want you to be able to fire while you're getting shot at. Uh, you gonna shoot the blue things? Uh. But uh, I don't know. This I'm really excited for today in general. I'm really sorry for uh, or uh, sorry. I saw sorry. I saw Core saying sorry. I'm really excited for the um, the 14 event. I'm excited to share that with people in chat. People can tell me all the lore that I don't know. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm super, super excited to hang out with, with some people and crush some brews and have some fun. I am not fucking sorry. What am I supposed to do? Oh... Ah. Was... Huh. I don't know that those were even... Yeah, you... are those drawn? They may not even draw them until you zoom in enough. Alright. More lasers. game is a trip, yeah. <laughs> Spectrum, thanks for gifting a sub. That's right, Randy. Doctor, the pilot is gone. What now? This is the real Mass Effect. Sorry, you turn your thingy up. I'm not getting clear signal, my boy. Speak from the diaphragm. Doctor! If... What? Kurt, Kurt, listen to me. I want you to lie down. Take a break. Relax. What? I can't hear you. I don't want to alarm you, but there's something very... behind you. Look, it's unspecuous. There's something behind... what? What? I... Turn around, you fool! Ooh. Ow! Whoa! Ooh. Oh, I'm just too good for my own bad self. Hello, Earth. Who's your daddy? Why, yes, I am. <laughs> uh, this game rules.
Just got back to my apartment from a week-long stay at the hospital. Good. Immediately started crying as Can soon as I saw my cats. Me, my Feels boy. good, man. Doctor, we're not getting through to him. Oh, nonsense. He's I'm glad your kitties were there for you. Reasonable. Something is just blocking the signal. It's that ship. Hmm. We could destroy their power supply so they stop jamming us. No, no, no. I've got a better plan. You should destroy their power supply so they stop jamming us. Heal? Good doggy. Now go straddle a torpedo while I figure out how to aim. I love surplus. <laughs> ah, it was the red button. Max, I've lost control of the Shit, torpedo. Right. Take the controls! Mini games with breakbeat drum lines in the background. This is big gaming right here. Love it. What is this style? I mean, it's kind of like, it's got big mid-century vibes. It's like pulp, pulp comic book style. It's kind of what I describe it. It's like, you know, your tales of fascination. <laughs> Diaper aliens just running around farting. It's also like shades of like, let's be real, like 13 year old idiot kid humor. That earthworm gym vibe. Okay. And now the UI changes and there's like a completely different, well, subtly different gameplay style. The VO gives you good and, good and evil vibes? I can kind of, I can kind of see that. Max, you've made it. Why, why is the turning sensitivity so much different to say it, but you're in bad for this shape. character? Also, I'm gonna, also your, your cursor's a little paw. Orf, orf. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Orf. Uh, actually, that should probably be backwards. Equip, unequip, jetpack throttle. Oh, wait, that's also jump. No, we'll make that right click. All right. Ow. Fetch those magnums in front of you by walking over them. Why is, is Max turning so much different? Ready. Hey. Your guns by using the selection button. Once the gun is almost. It's, it feels like it's at least it's changing now. It's selected. Press the select up button to equip it, and press the select down button to unequip it. The special magnum I gave you won't run out of ammo, but other guns deplete their supply as you fire. You'll automatically drop any empty weapons, but I'm sure you'll find more. Your powerful weaponry can often destroy objects in your environment, so don't be shy when it comes to shooting. That covers the basics, Max. Sick em. It's like that alien is still impaled. You can see your handiwork. You play the Die Hard trilogy game for THC Tuesday. Damn, that's a really good idea. Uh, meaning the like the shooter racing game for for PlayStation One, or the like Dynamite Cop beat 'em up game. Which Die Hard? Wait, that was Die Hard Arcade. Right, the when you beat up a ripped old dude at the end. Oh, that game, that game, six hell. Yeah. All three in one. Is that... Can you... F well, I can find a way to play it. Uh... 
Yeah. That's right. The max levels are quite literally shoot everything. Uh, Zbectum, thank you for gifting us up. Oh, guy from Plevin, thank you very much for the, uh, oh wait, that was back. Thank you very much for the cheer. Did I hear Collection came out on PC? Really? What? So I got... Maybe I take the battery somewhere? Maybe I take the battery somewhere. The adrenaline rush when you get the 50 cal. Yeah, it just like smashes everyone to the other side of the screen. Oh, there we go. Sure. You have an ammo counter for all your guns? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta pick them up and drop them. Keep blowing through them. It's like the, the, the mechanic of Max, I guess. Gun inventory management, you're always cycling out weapons. Hey! 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 Alien farting on me! That's what I meant by the puzzles. Yeah, I gotcha. The, uh, the wall, like the explodable walls. I, I get it, like the goal was to just have you shoot everything, right? That's, and then they reward you for shooting everything. I get what they're going for. It is a little awkward though. Shoot this too. Shoot it all. Shoot those things. Shoot that. Shoot that. Christ, this music. Oh, okay. This is straight up like that lunatic coil song, I think. Wow. Yeah, this is pretty old school, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right, I forgot you can actually equip the, the starting pistol. Yeah, it's it's all Matrix music. I mean, this character, like, is a Matrix dog. He's got, like, a little a little band around his eyes to look like Matrix sunglasses. He's got not two guns, but four guns. It's all about picking up Uzis and shooting them. I'm kind of surprised that there's not a button to, like, make him shoot dodge. And jump with two guns, that kind of thing. Oh. oh, Die Hard Trilogy available on PC for Windows 95. All right. We'll see what I can do. Yeah, playing a playing like a Virtua Cop style rail shooter would be would be pretty fun. That reminds me actually. I remember uh so okay, so I found this and I will I will I will pull it up later cuz it's what I'm going to use in the background of the Resident Evil uh stream but there are streams now that are just gameplay. That's it. Just rolling, looping gameplay. Uh, there's a long play channel on, on Twitch uh, with no commentary. There's So I found this channel on YouTube. Just kind of, you know, God bless the algorithm, sort of recommended it to me. Of a, It's just a YouTube channel that just streams Resident Evil games on a loop forever. It's just all of them in order. Uh, so I was going to put that on in the background during the stream, but... That's on my Abandonware? Alright, awesome. But yeah. Video games, video games made the full loop, I guess. 
What channel is that? I don't... I don't remember. I don't remember the name. Uh, you will see it shortly. Uh, space. Why though? I mean, it's it's not bad background noise. It's, it's kind of comfy. The little bleepy bloops of Resident Evil menus are just nice. The, the music in Resident Evil is pretty soothing, believe it or not, when there's not a zombie around. Wait, hold R and press up four times? Matrix mode? Uh, I don't know if they've been rebound. Is that for this game or something else? That may also be in like an old version of the game or something. Yeah, and sometimes the uh, sometimes the dialogue is a real treasure. Oh, but yes, yeah, speak. Okay, my 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 thought train has arrived at the station. So, um, I remember one million years ago playing the Umbrella Chronicles on Wii. I only played it for like an hour, and I was like, eh, this is boring. Um, but I watched a playthrough of it on this particular channel, and I was like, oh, there's actually a lot more going on here than I remember. Not to mention the whole draw of that game is that you got to see what Albert Wesker was up to during Resident Evil 1. Whoa! And somehow they incorporated a lot of the notes from the Resident Evil movie into what Wesker was doing in that particular game. Weirdly. They, like, there was a Red Queen and everything. So... Long story short, I think Umbrella Chronicles would be a pretty sick game to play. I still have a Wii U. So I might be able to play it Authentico if I buy like a copy of Umbrella Chronicles and then set up the, the fucking the most hideous console. You seriously need like at least four plugs to, to play a Wii U, jeez. But oh yeah, that's the other thing. Like I, I should probably set up a Wii U for a Prime Trilogy because that was also a... The Wii port of that game was amazing. I love the RE game, so that would make for great background noise. Yeah! Uh, it's it's really good for that. Oh yeah, these little... Mid-century gas pump kind of things. That's real, real good jetpack sound. I think it's called 24-7 Resident Evil Community TV. Yeah, that is exactly what it is. Biaz14 has found it. I mean, Biaz, if you want to, you can go ahead and link it in chat. It sounds like some people want to... Or Biaz, I hope I'm saying your name right. But it sounds like people uh, are interested. MDK is a Bioware game. MDK 2 is a Bioware game. Man, these like HD textures. Doesn't look bad. I love getting stoned and playing Umbrella Chronicles. Yeah. I'm, I'm now realizing just what a good pairing to being high as shit Resident Evil can be. Because the, uh, the game is so stupid, but, like, it takes itself super self-seriously. It's like Metal Gear Solid on, 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 like, on adrenaline. It's great. Uh, and I still think Resident Evil 6 is just, like, a masterpiece of, of shark jumping. It's like they, they made an entire game devoted to jumping a shark, and, and somehow the audacity of it makes it so incredible. Uh, for me, I know nobody likes that game, but it's actually RE6 is a uh, another game I was planning on busting out for for THC twos because that is that game is incredible. RE6 is a game. If you play it for score, yeah, like it's a it's a game when you're trying to like get achievements or ranks or whatever. But the first run through, you're like, what the fuck am I doing? 
I don't think I ever actually learned Leon's like weird fucking Matrix bullshit. I don't I don't understand it. He's got like reflex points that he can use to do quick shots, and he can do like cool fucking gun kata combos. But you have to like you have to hit like two the triggers at the same time on a weird it's like a weird combo game with him. I don't know. And then like what Jake was like this really weird. I don't know what it was. Jake's like Jake's Jake's campaign was like an action game. I guess Chris's kind of was too. What a weird fucking game, man. And just like these crazy long in-engine cutscenes that have just wild animation. Uh Six is just like the biggest, stupidest game. Uh that people couldn't wait to not pay attention to. Uh it might be bigger and stupider than Metal Gear Solid 4, and that's saying a lot. Ah oh, shit, I ran out just at the top. Yeah, Six had so many playstyles. So like so did so did uh Metal Gear Solid 4. You that game was like chock full of weird mini games and different gameplay styles. How do you go all the way down? And it does fall damage? Oh, I guess you're supposed to fall down the sides. Jesus. I think I give up after I fought the same boss like seven times in a row in Leon's story. That's understandable. Like, I feel like they they thought Leon would be the first story for most people, so it kind of starts with, like, kind of classic Resident Evil sensibilities. You're in that, like, creepy office building, like, presidential something or another. I don't I don't remember. <laughs> but it's like the lighting is good, and it's, like, spooky, and then it nearly immediately stops being that. What a ride, man. What a ride. And it's so long. God. What a beautiful, what a beautiful game. I wish MGS, MGS4 got a 60 FPS remaster. That would be so sick. But I can only imagine how impossible that, that must be. It's so long. It's so long. It's, it's so dumb. And there's so much of it. Like it's, it, it makes sense why they went to a different, a t they went a different tack with like uh seven because yeah uh man uh th they did everything they could with like that five or six style the, like big high action high energy blockbuster production value kind of game they definitely maxed it out with six it doesn't get more stupid and big than that um, I have a question. Does third-person horror in a game just not work anymore? Capcom is making a lot of first-person horror. Well, I mean, a lot is two, two games. I don't know that. Wait, is is Returnal them? Um, I think first-person is just more what people want now. Uh, I think that's just where the taste is. I don't know if it's gonna stay that way. Like, I don't, I don't know that. The market is ready to say that they just prefer first-person games in general over third-person games, but... I think they probably be market and test better. I prefer third. I think it... It's definitely got its place. And there are things that third does better than first. So, I totally get preferring one or the other. Oh, those music cuts are a little rough. I remember when video game soundtracks had the ability to actually, like, fade or transition between music tracks. It was a pretty big deal. And they're, like, spectating. <laughs> oh, I need gas, probably. First person is more immersive. I think most people would, would feel the same, yeah. You catch that on your phone? No, I think you're clear. Outsanity, thanks for the sub. <laughs> oh, every time you jump. Oh, for RPG games. Huh, interesting. I agree. I think it's... You know, like Red Dead or something like GTA V where you have established characters. I think it's... Cyberpunk is an interesting experiment, actually, in trying to have, like, established characters with... ...personalities, motivations. I want to 
to see my character. I think a lot of people do. Totally understandable. Especially in a game where, like, your appearance changes based on what you do or how you grow. Kind of nice to see that reflected back. And, like, something like Fable in first person just wouldn't hit the same. You know? I'm up here. I'm pretty sure, like, sometimes they punch you and the game laughs at you. I'm actually glad Cyberpunk wasn't third person because my outfits always looked horrible. Yeah, in that game, it's it's interesting. It If you want to look good, it actually takes effort. Like, you have to pick the right gear and, and upgrade it or manage it a little bit. They didn't make it so that everything looks cool automatically. Which I assume they could have done if they wanted to. So I don't I don't mind like looking cool being something you have to like put an effort into or even accept a sacrifice. Because that's what fashion is in real life. You can wear sweatpants and that's got everything you need. You put on nice fitted pants, maybe a little less comfortable, but looking nice, looking good. Cool. Oh sick! Oh! That's cool. Ow! Damn it. Oh, I can shoot it all now. <laughs> Dodging the wrong way. Damn it. Guns. Ow! When do we get a Shimigami Tensei stream? Whew. I got a pretty long uh, homework list of JRPGs to get through. I don't know that I could add Shimigami Tensei to it. Maybe, maybe a Shimigami Tensei 5 ever exists. Remember that? I usually, if I, well, Doctor, this is not withstanding. Here. If I'm going to do dalliances of less popular series, I usually wait till there's some kind of buzz around it. This was just like me being wistful about Bioware. Report? Mission complete. Deployment speed lacking. Must grease pelvis. <laughs> Friction is distracting. Good job, boy. You get a special treat when you come home. Now find Kurt and I'll get you both back. <laughs> Cyber shilling again. Always, baby. Sweet. Cyber shill life around here. Down, boy. Bad doggy. I like how the evil alien menaces a, a brother with soul. What now? More interference? But I've no time to flush the atomics now. Fun must wait. Kind of war games at all? Been playing Hell That Loose and it's really amazing. Huh. What kind? Like, talking like old school Call of Duty. Actually, I miss my doggy. Well, holy. Strategy or tactical game? Who the heck are you? Like what, Dawn of Heroes, I think? Well. Well, Schwang, if that is your real name. Or two Battlefield style? Aliens wait until I get my janitor back. You it can be fun. My ship is a hundred percent impenetrable. <laughs> uh, looking forward to the Romero script. As a fan of the series, I hated the Paul Anderson films. Nowadays, I have more of a grudging respect for him taking thirty million of Capcom money and going to. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this to bone a supermodel. Fuck your game. Well, it's ninety nine point nine percent. Resident Evil One, yeah, clearly didn't have anything to do with Resident Evil, but oh, fudge. I thought the movies converged a bit, uh, and and adopted 
if not the narrative, certainly the tone of of the Resident Evil games. Uh, it's 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 almost like an alternate Resident Evil reality that those movies became. Alien infestation has begun, Doctor, and you have not completed your personal defense training. I will initiate an emergency session in the Danger Kitchen. Jinkies, that was most unsettling. Danger Kitchen? You could have waited for me to walk over. Time is critical. Pick up the toaster and the loaf of bread on the counter. The toaster has appeared on your screen to the- Oh, right. I have to rebind those controls. Resonator, what's up? Hello and welcome. left and the loaf is to the right you have two inventories one for each hand left and right pressing the select up or down button selects different items once selected press the left select button to equip the toaster in your left hand and the right select button to equip the loaf in your right hand now smarty pants when you have the two items equipped you can combine them by pressing the use button huh? I've made toast! Delicious! Quickly, pick up the piece of toast and I will show you how to eat it. Equip the toast and press the left select button to eat it. Selecting the glove will unequip any item. Those are the basics, Doctor. Using these methods, you can combine many items into many different things, including potential weapons. Well, don't keep me in suspense. What are the combinations? I do not know what you will find, Doctor, so I cannot say. You are supposedly a smart fellow. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Right then. I'll have the ship under control in no time. Good luck, Doctor. I don't need luck. I've got science. Pretty incredible, incredible bit of uh, game engineering here to have the toast stick to every surface you fire it at. Uh, it's such a small thing, but I love it when, when games include what are just meant to be little interactive toys. Like, it doesn't do anything. It's not meant to. Duke Nukem, Duke Nukem was just like, that's kind of what it was when it made it so renowned. Just little interactables here and there. And then Duke Nukem Forever gave us the drawable dry erase board. Only to be surpassed by Half-Life Alex's chalkboard. So dumb. Alright, I gotta use the restroom. I'll be back in a second. Man, I feel like the... I feel like the Bugs Life intro comes up all the time. What's that all about? Oh, actually, we're coming up on... We're coming up, coming up on Final Fantasy time. I guess the... Stream isn't live yet. Let's see, just checking some things. Tapping on some things. Sorting some things out here and there. Yeah, not oh. Nope, no, nope, not live. Not live yet. Soon. 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 I'm so excited. to go. I think there will be Shadowbringer spoilers during the announcement stream. Uh, maybe? But I would expect them to be the sort of thing where if you haven't played Shadowbringers, the spoiler wouldn't make sense. And then if you did go and play Shadowbringers, you still wouldn't understand <laughs> until like, until later. It's kind of what I feel like, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. I don't think their goal in producing an event and announcing a new product is to in any way make somebody feel like they shouldn't get into it or shouldn't start playing it. And I think that outright spoiling interesting things would be something to do that. The lavatory. <laughs> Reflection is not available at this time. Always easy to do. Oh. Always a good time. Mm. This will 
clean out the tree lounge. Okay. Doctor, aren't you forgetting something? Yes. Uh, pants on, zippers up. I'm ready to go. Wash your hands, Doctor. Fair. Weird question, have you ever seen a snow plow plowing snow? I mean, probably in like... Maybe in like establishing shots of movies or TV or something, but I can't say that in real life I've ever with my own eyeballs witnessed it. Maybe when I was in Wisconsin for a, a winter, but... Uh... <laughs> exactly. It's a pretty peak humor, right? You have to like corral all these guys somewhere. Don't you like fight? I think I remember something like, oh, there's like a plant that, that eats them. Yeah, a little little Audrey action. Yeah. I think you have to let them stop bouncing. There we go. Bouncing. How'd you like Wisconsin? Uh, it wasn't the best for me. Like, I was a single dude and I didn't drink at that point and I didn't really like football. So it was just mostly cold. And I didn't really have a whole lot of money either, so, like, I just spent most of the time in my hotel room playing PS2 games. So, like, I, cause, like, I was spending a long time up there, so I... Hey! Don't run off! My <laughs> compliments, Doctor! Dinner was excellent! Eh, uh, anything for you? The cheese curds were friend. wonderful. I should return the favor, I think. Ah, uh, that toaster will do nicely! Yeah, yeah, I've talked about it before. Um, I didn't have the best time, but I'm not going to put that one on uh, on Wisconsin. An atomic toaster! By Jove, now we're cooking! Uh, Dylan, thank you very much for the, the cheer. A uh, handsome one, thank you for the sub. Looking forward to the manuscript. Oh yeah, sorry, I, re I read your comment, but... I tend to, I tend to see the, the message rather than the comment, or than the sub a lot of times, I think. Shoot atomic toast now. Oh, that's right. The scientist also had some like platforming sections. Huh? I'm not quite sure what. Oh, maybe I gotta go tape the thing. Oh. There we go. Dylan, thank you very much for gifting five subs. So you're the worst winter I saw was in Sugret in si Siberia. Woo. I have never, ever in my life I could anchor something here. been like been in cold like that. Where it's it's such cold that it like changes changes the way that people live. I've made a ladder now to find a place to use it. Oh, wow. What platform was this originally released on? Uh, it was originally PC, I'm pretty sure. And then they did a Dreamcast port, I think. Last night, Akira Yamaoka teased that he was composing music for a project everyone was hoping to hear about. Interview was taken down since, so we might really be getting a new Silent Hill soon. <gasps> Interesting. So, scary bits, though. Konami still owns it. So, best case scenario, Konami licensed Silent Hill to a developer we all know and love. And they're working with Yamaoka. I... That could be the case. Konami, for some reason, has not gotten into licensing at all. Which is weird. Uh, or they used to, and then they just stopped. So, I don't know. I think it's because they... They understood that their properties were valuable. 
but didn't think they were in a position to capitalize on that value, aside from, you know, making Pachi slot and things like that, which were valuable. And also, Konami just had an... an Konami just had some in, uh, an investor call that was really strange. Like, they did okay, but not great. So they might, they might be like... They might... It might be time for them to go to their brands and start trying to extract value from them in that way. Uh... I could, I could see that happening. I didn't really look at the report much. I just saw the headline. I really need to. But Konami's been doing... Has been doing very, very well. And I think that kind of explains why they didn't really see the need to play in the AAA game space. Because they were doing so well. But I think if... I think... I guess it stands to reason that Pandemic would put a dent in a Tapachi slot. Because you have to be there in person. So yeah, maybe, uh... Maybe their pseudo gambling money is drying up, and they gotta they gotta find another way to earn money. And maybe that is licensing Silent Hill to a developer. Worst case, they make a pachinko game. They already did. There's already a Silent Hill slot machine. Actually, I think it was a I was watching a Games Done Quick run, and a, and a dude had a Silent Hill slot machine. I was like, what the? That's not fair! I want that! Damn it. Hit the lever. Huh? Is there a lever I'm supposed to be hitting? Or is that a reference to something else? Uh, fuck. I can't tell. That's a jump I'm supposed to be able to make. Okay, there's two. Well, that one maybe looks a little closer. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. There's a Castlevania pachinko machine. Damn it, I want that so bad. Dagze, thank you for the sub. Thank you for the lamal. Sometimes we all need a little lamal. Maybe I can make this jump. Damn it. Given how mad Death Stranding was, I wonder how good Kojima's Silent Hill would have been. You didn't like it? Hmm. I liked it quite a bit. But it remains to be seen. Yeah, everyone was, was appropriately captivated by PT, but PT is not a full game. And I, it can't be. I don't know that you can make a, a whole game out of a... Like a looping motif like that. It works so well in the context PT used it in, but... That's gotta be a game at some point. Or, or people are gonna flip out. Oop! Shucks. Damn, there's so much jumping. Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. PT was so weird. It was great. I loved it. Uh, yeah. And the just the fact that it like it had it it it, it was like a great hit of of like like modern horror myth. The way that they did it. To, like have all these secrets and like people had to share stories and it really had people like telling each other ghost stories like legitimately and then i turned around and then she was on the she was on the stairs man like it's so cool and then somebody was like oh i never saw that so it oh, it was such a magical moment and and one of those where like the game experience was reinforced by the things that happened outside the game uh and the and that's entirely due to the way they designed it and the way that they released it it's so brilliant and yeah, it's it's so easy to go from that to be like, oh, but what if that was a whole game? And then it's a little harder to imagine what that's like. Um, I think FromSoft created that atmosphere with like Demon Souls by making a game with that was obscure and mysterious, and like people had to had to kind of band together to figure it out. Played five minutes of PT, had to stop. Too scared. There's something about how domestic PT is. Like, it's just in an average suburban home. That's such a good setting for a, a sort of decline into nightmare uh, scenario. That guy, 789, thank you for the sub. I really turned the corner on Death Stranding once I stopped walking everywhere and started building roads and vehicles. That helps, yeah. Uh... Using zip wires and stuff. It's not about 
It's, it's, it's really, it sounds so dumb, but it's really not about where you're going, it's about how you get there. That is the game. The game is how you get there, not if you're gonna get there. And that's the part that's like totally, totally on you. And there's mechanics that support and interact with that. I, think I have to go the other way. Just got an anime delivery from Amazon. Oh, box hype. Anime box hype. Why am I even going this way? I don't even, this doesn't even, why am I even doing this? I guess I assumed there'd be something over here. Am I not supposed to, is there nothing up here? I gotta go in that. I think there was a vent. Yeah, that one. Oh, maybe that's it. I gotta crawl over so I can drop down here. All right. Oh, no! Christ. <laughs> Why did I fly out of there? Wait, what? Oh, it's quick save. Okay. Alright, that's not too far back. So wait, can I... I can just jump to that, right? Huh. It's way faster. It's gotta be a secret up there or something. <laughs> okay. Hup! Who is Death Stranding for? I'm really keen to give it a go. That's a great question. Uh, G Jesus. So, would you believe Death Stranding is so kind of fundamentally different than a lot of games that it's very hard to say who it's for because there's not like a crowd for that kind of game yet. I would say Death Stranding is kind of for the, yeah, walking simulator, but maybe more the like Stardew Valley kind of player, but somebody who wants something a little more depressing, uh, less wholesome, I guess. Uh, it is it is a scenery, landscape, slow ride kind of game, uh, like flight simulator. Um, Eve Online? Probably not. I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, the plot is very difficult. It requires a lot of reading, too. They don't tell you the story. Well, they, I mean, they do, but they don't. A lot of the lore and the, the stories actually in the emails that you that are long. Rant coming in? I mean, you're, you're right. If, if, your hair, if the hairs on your gamer neck are, are tingling, you're not too far off. Ugh. Came here to game, not to read. Yeah. So, Death Stranding is not for the person who came to game. Uh, unless they are really into very esoteric and bizarre and different kinds of gameplay formats. Yeah. Nasty. Nasty. Oh my, there's something fishy about that crate. <laughs> Boxes of rocket underpants. Oh, I guess I need a lighter. I have a feeling I would appreciate Death Stranding. Maybe. It's a, it's a, it's a mood game, it's a vibe game, um, it's not a lean forward and game game, it's a lean back and kind of take the world at a, at a walking pace kind of game. Now some jelly and a blow dryer. If only I could find that monkey. Okay, well now I can throw Molotovs. No, I don't. These won't. No. Death Stranding is a cool game to read about on a wiki. Or have somebody that did all the reading, like, break it down for you. Yeah. I enjoy Shenmue, so I'll probably enjoy Death Stranding. Yeah, actually. Yes. People that have the tolerance and the patience for Shenmue. And the, the, the enjoyment of Shenmue is, like, experimental... I mean, BS sometimes. Okay, well, that's not what you do then. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Shenmue is a really good... Because people have strong reactions to Shenmue. After your reaction is, why the hell am I doing this? This is stupid. To Shenmue, you'll probably think the same thing about Death Stranding.
Okay, well, I don't know what I thought would happen. Oh, okay, maybe I gotta There's light this one. Fishy about that grate. Hmm. Yeah, I might not do that. Maybe not this time. I'll do that this time. Uh, not that. Anything but that. Now some jelly and a blow dryer. If only I could find that monkey. Ah. No. Nasty. Why do I have a fishbowl? Oh, hmm. I feel like I put the fishbowl on my head. Oh, yes, I will create. So I can... Nothing. So I can... Breathe in space? That's where my head's going. Can I light this one? No? Hmm. Gives you Siberia vibes? Oh, what? Just the... Oh, 14 is live? Okay. Well, it feels... It feels wrong to leave this on an unsolved puzzle, but... Hey, the, what... Anytime you leave a game, there's an unsolved puzzle of some sort, right? I love there was no dialogue in MDK. It added to the mystery. Hmm. Oh, there's a fucking elevator. Wait, what? Ah. I gotta hit this with a... Alright, well, whatever. Alright. That's MDK 2. Uh, second game, third game. Ever made by Bioware, after Baldur's Gate. Uh, Bioware has a pretty eclectic history. So, fun game. Uh, and then I think you just kind of iterate through the three characters and the stages get wackier and crazier and stuff like that. Uh, anyway, look it up. $10 on Good Old Game Store. Again, Good Old Games gave me this game for free. Uh, and this channel is affiliated, partnered with them. So I'm shilling. I'm shilling now. But, uh... Time to go for a game that I do pay for. <laughs> I'm going to do this for free. So, because uh, I'm really excited for it. So, uh, let me click over to the Final Fantasy stream and I'll be right back. See you guys in a second. <laughs> 